And welcome back to the Panzer Museum and our tour of the Jagdpanzer IV. Starting as ever with the commander's position, and as you can see, he has a simple swinging single piece hatch. It has a 360 degree rotating periscope in the middle, and that works in conjunction with the one fixed periscope on the left so we can see out. Now, if you look at photographs of the original mock-ups of the vehicle, you'll see there was a ring of seven periscopes scattered around. Also, there was a proposal to fit the Commander with a swinging hatch similar to that on Panthers, but as you can see, they decided to economize and not do this. The other thing he has is a small little hatch to the front here, and this is to allow the use of the scissors periscope by 10, and one was issued for every three vehicles in a platoon. Also, there was a 0.9 meter rangefinder, which was on similar one in three issue to allow with good first round hits. Anyway, that's it for the outside for now. I'm gonna hop down in. Once you're in the commander's hatch, it is basically a big box, which is nice and simple, and I'm sure the cameraman is very happy. So, the first thing you will see once you're in is the ratchet system for mounting the SF-14Z scissors periscope. And quite simply, when you want to use it, you flip open the hatch I showed you earlier, and you crank it up, you know, literally, you know, up periscope. Other optics, well, as I say, you can have the periscope on the left and the one directly above you. Now, I'm seated on a seat which kind of swings out and around, but it doesn't do it anymore. This is a very old vehicle that has hardly been well maintained for you know, fairly obvious reasons. The ammunition is stowed all over. This is a rolling ammo box. You got ammunition in the upper superstructure on both sides. You have ammunition on the whole side on the left. If you look behind, uh, against the firewall, you can see the mounting points for the radio. So you have your standard radio behind the loader. And then you would also have in a command vehicle an FU-8 for better transmitting power. In the roof is the mounting point mentioned earlier for the close-in defense system. And if you look down underneath, you're gonna see the power shaft, which of course runs right the length of the vehicle, but because it's underneath the gun, it's actually not in anybody's way. If I look forward to the gunner seat, underneath the gunner seat, you're gonna see the escape hatch. Now on a regular Panzer IV, the escape hatch is located under the radio operator bow gunner on the right-hand side. Well, in this vehicle, that is taken up by an ammunition rack. So it's not gonna do anybody any good. So what they did was they moved it over to the left-hand side. It is underneath the gunner seat. And that, of course, will be the next stop on this tour. Next man forward in the train, of course, is the gunner, and I am seated again on a swiveling seat, but it also rotates on a swing arm. The pivot point is more or less here. And the purpose for this is, remember, as the gun is traversing, it's moving left and right. The sight is moving left and right. The controls are moving left and right. So guess what? The gunner's got to move left and right, hence the pivoting arm. The controls are to his front and they are both traversely mounted. The traverse of the gun system is located on the left hand side with the electrical firing trigger and elevation is on the right. But both being like this, I can only imagine it takes a little bit of practice otherwise you end up with that sort of patting your head, rubbing your belly problem. The gun we've met before, it is the Pack 39 We saw it on the Jagdpanzer 38T. Fires the same ammunition as the Stuck 42 from the Sturmgeschutz and the KWK from the Panzer IV. Your AP round will come at it about 750 meters a second and punch through, give or take, 96 millimeters of armor sloped at 30 degrees at 500 meters. Maximum elevation is all of 15 degrees and the maximum depression is 8. Now, because the gun is offset a little bit to the right, this does affect the traverse a little bit. So although it'll traverse 15 degrees to the right, it'll only traverse 12 degrees to the left. The other gun he has, I'll just mention very quickly in this prototype vehicle, is the machine gun on the left-hand side here. And as you can see, firing it will be rather annoying because you've got to shoot it left-handed 
Uh, and besides, you're supposedly controlling your gun. You got a pretty good HE round on this gun. So th this is why it was deemed useless. They got rid of it and moved it over to the other side. Uh, other ammunition, in addition to the AP and HE, eventually you ended up with a heat round as well. The upgrade, of course, was the L70, the Panther's gun, and which, modified to fit, became the Pac-42. Now this will send around at it about 930 meters a second and punch through, give or take, 12.5 centimeters of armor under the same conditions. For really nasty targets, you had the APCR round. And this would hurtle out at about 1135 meters a second and was rated to punch through some 17 centimeters of 30 degree sloped armor at 500 meters. That's not bad. That said, the longer gun did mean that you had a couple more limitations. So the depression was now only six degrees and the traverse to the right was the same 12 degrees that you could do to the left. To his front, the primary optic, which as I mentioned, goes through the whole roof. It is the SFL ZF-1, and it is a by 5 sight with a whopping 8 degrees field of vision. Not fantastic. Now the good thing is that because it goes through the roof, this is a great ambush vehicle. You can stay completely hidden while you find your target and range to it and so on. However, when you drive forward, you're never entirely sure if your gun is clear of the obstruction. But in this case, because the machine gun ports are more or less the same height as the main cannon, what you can do is you can simply look at the machine gun port and that way you'll know if your gun is clear. So that saves you a little bit of time. When the gun was upgraded, well, of course, this means you had to upgrade your sights. So this now adds the SFL ZF-1A. This is graduated to 3000 meters for armor piercing. And well, if you can see the target of that range, 5100 meters for high explosive. Like many of the German sites of the era, it comes with a mill triangle scale. So that allows you to better estimate range to target, and it also allows offset for lead. Outside of that, well, there have been in worse gunner seats. I mean, I could do without the fuel tank to my front, which is taking up a little bit of my leg room, but it's not bad. You can also see how the armored port leads in to the fuel tank filler. That's it for here. So now I'll climb over the fuel tank to get to the driver's seat. So I have made it into the driver's position and uh, I'm starting to see immediately why this extra gun was removed because this is just asking to impale my head on rough ground. Yeah, I'm sure it'll swivel over if it wasn't frozen, but still this is in the way. A bit annoying. Another annoying thing is actually getting into the driver's position. So these handholds are absolutely necessary. Once I'm in, it's actually not all that bad. I fit reasonably well. A shorter person will be quite comfortable in here. It is your standard three pedal arrangement. So your clutch on the left, the brake, as you can see as push, it applies by use of a crossbar. And the accelerator is on the right. Now something which is missing in here is the cross drive that connects the differential to the final drive. It's been removed from this vehicle, so it looks like I have a lot more room for my legs than I really would. To the right. The gear stick, it is six speeds forward and one in reverse attached to the transmission. Now look at the size of this transmission and then look at the size again of the little hatch for the transmission housing at the front. The one doesn't fit in the other. So as near as I can tell, the, the central hatch on the glacier plate is really just for you to access the differential and maybe change out the differential if necessary. If you had to replace this entire transmission the only way I can see this being done is the same as you would in, say, Yeg Panther. You pull out the gun, set that aside somewhere in the field, you then disconnect the power shaft, get that out of the way, somehow lift and drag the transmission to the rear, then up and then forward out the hole that the gun was in. This is inconvenient. I'll leave it at that. To see out, he yeah, has just got his two periscopes. They are actually periscopes. They look like slits at the front, but they are a little bit higher than the holes down here. So you can see the mounting point, periscope slides in, you can see out that way. I mean, other than that, the driving position, as I say, is not bad between the two tillers. Uh, the only problem is you gotta get out. And well, guess what? That's what I'm gonna do next. Loader side.
Loader side. Well, he's got the entire right-hand side of the vehicle to himself, which sounds lovely, until you realize that his personal space is going to be reduced a little bit when the gun starts traversing to the left and the recoil guard starts coming over to the right. If you look around, well, he's got the ventilation system up here, goes all the way around this duct out the back. Now, when you moved to the L70 on the Panzer IV Lang, Later vehicles had the compressed air system that we saw on the Panther, so that would just shoot the fumes out the end of the gun instead of allowing them inside the vehicle. Much healthier for you. Moving around, well, we got the machine gun that was mounted on all the Egg Panthers, and of course the loader would be the primary operator. There are 2,000 rounds of machine gun ammunition scattered around inside the vehicle. Further down, you've got the second fuel tank under which is the 10 round ready rack. This is left-handed loading, uh, which is well, not too unusual for the time, but it really does start to get to the edge of where you want to be acceptable. You'll note also that although it's the same pack 39 as I say on the Egg Panther 38T, the loader is on the correct side of the gun for operating the, the handle, the recocking, everything else. 14 additional rounds are stored on the inside of the casemate wall. The grand total in the Jagdpanzer IV is 79. Now, when you upgraded the gun to the Forlang, that meant that you had longer ammunition, which took up more space, which meant that you only had room for 57 rounds. The exception, again, is the 470A, which being a huge and ugly vehicle, well, that had room for 90 rounds. Only other things in here, well, you got your periscope to see out the right hand side, so outside of your machine gun port, that's your only field of vision if you need it, and the hatch out which I shall now egress. Simple, one piece. In total, Vomag built 750 Egg Panzer IVs between January and November of 44, with deliveries of the first vehicles arriving at the front in March. Production of the 470V started in August of 44, so what you have are both types of vehicle in production at the same plant at the same time. So doubtless it was simply a reflection of which gun happened to be available when the vehicle rolled off the line. In total, 930 of those 470Vs were built, before a series of bombing raids in March of 45 put the line permanently out of commission. The alternative vehicle I mentioned before is the 470A. Now this was built by Alcat, and this was an attempt to fit the 70 cannon into an unmodified Panzer IV. The problem was that it didn't fit in the turret, so they had to put it straight onto the hull. But without those extra modifications, such as a fuel tank, you had to have a higher superstructure. The result, and one somewhat perforated example still remains in Sumur, is a rather tall and ugly vehicle. 277 of those were built by March of 45. Now, the tactical mobility of the vehicle was perhaps a little bit limited by the extreme nose heaviness, but once you got it into position, what you ended up with was a very significant threat to any Allied vehicle, possibly not including the IS heavies. That was it. I hope you found the tour of the Egg Panzer IV interesting. I'll see you on the next one. Greetings! Just a reminder, if you are not yet a player of World of Tanks, the free game, because it's not going to cost you anything to try it out, have a look at the text description below the video here. Download it, try it out, let us know if you like it. That was it, see you on the next one. Which will get you some 240 kilometers on the road, not bad. And that figure may be wrong. 210, I was close, I was close. So as a result, you had to leave a slot big enough. Okay. <laughs> you have such a different perspective on things when you have kids of your own. All right, three, two. It's the best way of getting out of here. Uh.
They had some very brave people sitting in that driver's seat. Um. Oh. <laughs> oh, good lord. <sighs> yeah, you wouldn't want to be doing that in a hurry. Okay, hopefully it's better for the loader. 